Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about one of the most common questions I get, and that is when is it appropriate to go from like a full body three day a week program to a four day upper lower split? And, and realistically speaking, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that for 95% of you, there is no reason whatsoever to ever use anything but those two. Now, we could argue about different sorts of movement pattern splits. We could argue about five-day-a-week programs, six-day-a-week programs, all that, right? We could argue about those things. Completely irrelevant. Best coaches in the world, best athletes in the world for decades run one of those two templates, all right? They can take people all the way to the Super Bowl in the NFL for their strength conditioning programs. They take elite powerlifters all the way to world records, and I mean dozens and dozens of world records. They can maximize hypertrophy. So there, there's no reason to, to step away from those things. They're proven they work. There's plenty of programming around them. So really, I, most of the stuff that I'm going to discuss is going to be geared around those. And I'm not saying there aren't really elite specialized lifters who could benefit from breaking away from that under the care of a good coach. They do exist. So it's like you make those statements and people say, well, remember Marissa Hinda, you know, Chad Wesley Smith has her bench in four days a week. Well, that's fine. She's also an elite ultra elite power lifter with decades of experience under the guidance of a coach that's not you so set that nonsense to the side it works for her in a specialized highly specialized coaching environment so for everybody else let's talk about this why full body three day a week uh, because for the novice lifter we don't need large amounts of training volume to stimulate maximum muscle growth or maximum strength. We don't need much in the way of accessory movements to stack size on you. And because we're dealing usually with trying to maximize muscle protein synthesis uptime, we don't have to balance stuff like frequency and recovery to the same degree. Full body works. It makes you focus on big lifts, which is usually where, where most novice lifters end up spinning their wheels for years and years on end. It's because they don't put a, a massive focus on progression on the big lifts. When you're training full body, and let's say you got to get out of the gym in an hour and a half, you can't hit your whole body without using mostly big movements. It forces you to do that. It forces exercise selection that's going to give you the most progress. Right? It doesn't give you room for junk volume. So by that nature, it forces progression and it forces you to train at a high frequency uh, because we know that depending upon your experience level, ideal frequencies for things like muscle growth tend to be somewhere between two and three times a week for any given muscle. Not saying there are outliers who do better on five. There are. There's been research that's detected that. But we know that nobody maximizes growth on one. You could always get a little more out of two. Always. So it forces you into that frequency and it forces you to work on big lifts. Furthermore, it's not that hard for most people to get into the gym three days a week, All right? It, it's relatively easy to work with. It gives you 48 hours between workouts to recover. It, it's a pretty good tool overall. So at what point do we say, all right, I need to go to an upper lower? Um, I'm gonna say when you need more training volume. When you've reached a threshold, in your training to where you need to either start periodizing or you need more and more accessory type movements to stimulate maximum growth. You say, well, what do you mean? Uh, how about when you get to the, the point where your chest starts to be, become a recovery issue for your tricep growth and you can't just come in and do a bunch of bench pressing and weighted dips because your triceps start lagging because they're not getting enough total training volume and your chest is get, is putting out all it can handle. All right, you're gonna have to start maybe adding some tricep work. And, and notice I didn't specify for hypertrophy versus performance there. It's irrelevant. The programming into that's the same. You still run into the same issues, volume and recovery. We get to that issue to where you start needing more and more total training volume to adapt. You just stall too much. Well, how are you going to get more training volume? You're going to have to get more days in per week. Well, how do you, you, you go to four days, right? You go to four days. Because trying to train full body more than three days a week, you damn well better know what you're doing. 
most people are never going to program that correctly. It's going to be problematic. So when you start needing the higher training volumes to the point where you need to add days. Now, here's what I want to state with that. That's not at the point where a lot of people think they're at. Right? Not where they think they're at. I'm not talking about when you're still what I would call a late novice. Look, if you bench 205 for three reps, I'm not talking about you. If you squat 275 for, for a double or you deadlift 315 for three reps, we're not talking about you. You should probably stick out a full body program unless a coach puts you on something different. Personalized program. And a personalized program is not, hey, they eight mail you a cookie cutter 12 week program. No, personalized means that coach looked at what you're doing and they're actually updating you every week. All right. That might be when you need to go to upper lower. Essentially, we go to upper lower when we either need to start adding multiple accessory movements in and or we need to start periodizing training. How about when you want to train multiple rep ranges in a week? And I'm talking about on bigger exercises or different performance elements. All right, that might be the point where it becomes beneficial to go to upper lower. Because then we can do concurrent periodization better. It's hard to do it correctly on a three day a week. It can be done. It's going to flow better on a four. Uh, when we reach a point to where the total squat volume that we need to hit starts to really interfere with our ability to bench press, for example. Notice I didn't say power lifting strength numbers because, again, we come over to the other point I always make. If you're a drug-free, hypertrophy-oriented guy, you should probably train more like a power lifter anyways. Because what is power lifters usually doing? Big heavy weights on their big barbell movements. Smaller weights and more reps on their smaller accessory movements, right? Shouldn't be a difference there. The only difference between someone training for general hypertrophy and strength versus powerlifting is you're not going to be hitting longer at maxes in your training. That's the real difference. The rest of the programming should be generally the same because serious powerlifters are trying to maximize hypertrophy, aren't they? Right? They need to be as big as possible in their weight class. They're training for maximum hypertrophy too. So we go to a system like that when it's time to start periodizing. We go to a, a system like that when you can't maximize your growth off six or seven big movements and you have to start adding in smaller movements and more than just one. Because on a full body, you can hit one lagging body part. If your biceps are lagging, you can do some bicep work. You can do it every single workout. Your hamstrings are lagging. You can do some hamstring work every single workout. Or just stack it in on Friday, right? On a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What happens when you start needing multiple assistance movements? What happens when your triceps, your traps, and your hamstrings are now your weak links? Now you're needing at least three different types of accessory movements and you've identified a movement pattern weakness in your bench press all right it becomes increasingly difficult to program this off of the full body and get enough training volume in to hit all these elements when you reach that threshold it's time to go to an upper lower now when I say weak links let's come back over to where people say well I think my weak link on my bench press is this and you look and they don't know how to bench press and they're doing 185 for a double Okay, you're weak. You don't have a weak link in your bench press. Your body is the weak link in your bench press. Because everything is lagging. You don't have big pecs or triceps or front delts. Or you'd be benching more than 185 or a double. You need to keep working on everything. Therefore, that's full body. In short, we go to an upper lower when you actually have to start specializing. And I don't mean specializing in one lift or one muscle group. I mean specializing in that all of your progression is going to require some fine tuning and specialization. All of your lifts now require weak point training. You have multiple muscle groups in your body 
that are limiting your overall performance and muscle mass. Right, that's when we go to up or lower. So hopefully that answers that. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.